Hello and welcome back to the channel for another College Tier for You. Today I'll be taking a look at the Transformers Studio Series Bumblebee Movie Concept Art Megatron. This is Studio Series 109, and this is a concept Megatron based on some of that artwork that was never used for the Bumblebee movie. Pretty cool to take a look at this guy. I got him from All Time Toy Store. Check out the link in the description below to get yours if you would like to pick up this figure. So again, this is a concept figure, so not based on actually anything that was ever really in the movies, but it was concept art that was made for the movies, so pretty neat. And uh, this is a triple changing Megatron too, so pretty neat uh, set of modes here, combining lots of different versions of Megatron that we've seen throughout the history of the Transformers franchise. So before we take a look at this incredible figure, just take a look at the included display base here. Let's see, nice artwork there from the beginning of the Bumblebee movie um, on a Cybertron, which is probably where if Megatron had appeared, that's where we would have seen him. And of course, take a look at the packaging here. You can see a cool little concept art for Megatron up front. You know, this guy is a leader class, so it is a pretty big box there. You can see on the back, his three modes. And another image on the side. We have like that concept art, kind of light blue there. Showing like the, uh, the drawings. And you have a nice thick booklet <laughs> for all of his three modes. And easy to follow instructions as usual. And here is Megatron. And this is a really, really great figure in my opinion. He is pretty awesome. Um, he's a lot of fun to mess around with. His transformations, interesting enough, complex enough, but not overly difficult. Um, it actually reminds me a lot of Blitzwing's transformation, the way it works, which makes sense because he goes between a tank and an airplane. And his overall articulation, aesthetic, all of it is insane. Um, really definitely liking this figure and definitely appreciating the leader class price point. I think in general, all of our, what we considered our current like Voyager leader figures, so like Optimus Prime, for example, um, those should, I think, always be in the leader scale instead of, you know, like Optimus Prime being a leader just because he has a trailer and actually being a Voyager figure, I think he should actually be more of this this height as I think it works a lot nicer with some of the deluxes and stuff that we have in the line. So there is Megatron there. You can see really nice silver made silver and gunmetal paint apps all over, some red. He is looking really, really sharp. Doesn't have any kibble on him. He's very accurate to that concept on the box. You can see the back. Lots of detail on this guy. Lots and lots of detail. And I'm definitely loving that silver paint. See that head sculpt has lots of nice mechanical detail on it. Bring it a little closer here. Take a look at that. Nice red eyes. Subsequent symbol on the chest. Nice detail on the torso section there and the forearms. Detailed all around. No hollow spaces on this guy whatsoever. Everything's detailed. Lots of screw and pin joints. This is what a leader class figure should be for sure. So in terms of accessories, he really only comes with one. It would have been nice if he had like a, an Energon Axe or, or his um, mace, of course, that he uses in the G1 cartoon. But he does come with this cannon, so of course you can have it attached on his side there. But if you want a different look, it does fold up somewhere. The barrel collapses in here and tabs into the side. And you can store this on his back if you wanted to, either facing up or rotate it down. So if you wanted to store his, his fusion cannon, but not uh, on his person, you could do that. You can also extend it back out and store it on his back, of course, with the cannon facing up however you want. We can also rotate this barrel around, face that direction. So store it a different way. You can, you know, use this mode if you want, whichever one that you prefer. There's also this tab here, which I don't know, it's, it's there. It's there to do things, but I believe you can put it in his hand. Kind of, kind of put it in his hand. You could use this tab instead. On his forearm, either arm, you have ports on either arm, um, or I believe you can mount this as the point is over his shoulder, like that, if you want to have 
that look going on. You can have that going on. Sorry, he's really he's a pretty tall figure here. But I think that actually is kind of a neat look. And then if you want it to go down, you can just have that going on. You could collapse the gun, all of that. So definitely lots of options here for how you can display this figure. All right, now for some articulation. And this guy, he's got it all. So you can look up, you can look down, you can tear inside to side, do the full 360, you can tilt his head a little bit, not very much. Shoulders go out full 90 degrees, rotate full 360, no problem. He does have a forward butterfly and butterfly. Those are not due to transformation. Um, forward butterfly and reverse butterfly, excuse me. Um, but those are not due to transformation. Those are just solely incorporated for the robot mode. Then he does have a full um, bicep rotation up there. You also have an elbow rotation for transformation. You have past 90 degrees out of a single jointed elbow, which is fantastic. Then the wrists do swivel. They do move in and out a little bit. And then at the hands, you do have several points of articulation. So the, the index finger is separately articulated at the base and at the mid knuckle there. And then all the other fingers have the same articulation points, but these three are attached together and the thumb is static to hold that five millimeter part size. Then you do have like a mid torso rotation, I guess, for his waist swivel, but full 360 unhindered. And then these hip skirts you can kind of move out of the way and you can get him kicking up to about there. You can kick back to there. You can do splits. You got a thigh rotation there. You have past 90 degrees out of a single joint at the knee as well, which is fantastic. And then the feet move up, they move back and they rock side to side as well. So fantastic articulation for this leader figure. Now for some comparisons, and I'll only be doing comparisons in robot mode here because his other modes, I don't think it's as relevant. So he's kind of a kind of on his own and I don't have that other many, that many other figures with me at the moment. Pardon me. All right, so here is Prime. This is the KO version, but it is the same size as, this is of course, same mold as the Studio Series Prime, and here's Studio Series Wheeljack, just so you can get a sense of size. I do like the scaling here. Um, so I know if you haven't seen my review on the MHC Toys version of this guy, he's a little bit taller. So he probably comes in a little taller than Megs, but that Prime is absolutely amazing. But I do I do like the scaling here. I think between Prime and Megs, this is a pretty good, pretty good size. I think Megatron should be a little bit taller than Prime probably. Um, but there you go. So if you're collecting the Studio Series line, I think he fits in really well with the Rise of the Beast characters for sure. Um, or of course, if you have the uh, Bumblebee movie, Studio Series Prime, it's a fantastic figure as well. I think blends in very nicely with these figures. And just so you can see, the Lux figure, a good bit smaller than Megs here. So I think that stacks up pretty nicely there. Now for transformation, first we'll go into tank mode. Uh, the transformation, maybe the first few times can be a little bit little bit tricky, but it really is not hard to do at all once you just get the hang of the steps. So first up, you want to collapse the hands as tight as possible here and get that index figure. I usually see it inside of the thumb there. So you have a nice, get the hands a nice ball shape so they can tuck inside of the arm cavity, close that up. And you can extend this gun if you want a little bit now just to get it ready for later. And then same thing on the other side. Open up that bottom panel, curl up all those fingers there, get his index finger inside his thumb, tuck it inside of that cavity, and close all that up. And now we can separate this whole back section from the front. And then there's a whole lot of hinge joints here. You just want to extend all of them out so you have maximum working room. I also like to extend the shoulders all the way out just to have as much clearance as possible. You want to turn the head all the way around, flip this whole section forward, Make sure the head does actually make it through too, like that. And then take these little side pieces, fold those down. And there's the upper body just about complete. Now we want to hinge the, high, the skirts out to the side. And this very much reminds me of the shockwave transformation um, from the Bayverse movies. So you want to pull out the legs here on double hinge joints. They do snap in nice and secure. So it can take a little bit of effort to get them out. Sometimes it's easier to hinge that skirt out of the side just to get the clearance you need. Pull those out. 
and then we can go ahead and collapse these skirt pieces down just so they're out of the way like so all right now for the legs here first want to i like to start by pulling out the treads here and the first time you get the figure these are a little a little stiff so it does take a little bit of force to get them out i would recommend a tool for the first time to, to kind of wedge them wedge them out but then after really just one transformation they come out nice and easily and still stay out too they're a pretty good balance of stiffness on these parts slider joint isn't ideal honestly but Use a little tool here. Help get this tread out. There we go. Just gotta get in there and then it pops right out. So now these are elevated. Next, you wanna come to the wing sections here and we're gonna detach them from the leg, like so. And now there's a series of double hinge joints on the inside that you just want to utilize. So just pop all of those up like that, collapse the foot inside, and then this tab is going to go into the forward slot on the foot there. And I just tab in like that, then bring the wing back down, tab that back in, and then rotate the wing tip up like so. And there is one leg ready for combination. Then same thing on this side, so you want to undo this wing here. Pop out those double hinge joints, like so. Collapse the foot, attach that tread, and collapse that whole leg section, like so. And then now what we want to do is we're going to rotate, just get the arms out of the way, and then we're going to rotate the leg here. Oh, make sure you collapse that wing down too. <laughs> get it on the other side. Right, and then there is tab slot connection that will happen here. So the slot, this tab, and just line all of that up. And then the same thing on the other side. So you're rotating at this joint, get it around, and tab all that in. And we're almost there. Now just for the top section. So get the arms out of the way. And you're just going to kind of rest this whole piece down. And there is a little overlap that happens back here. There's a little black piece down here that goes into that little nub there. So line that up. It'll tab right into place. Then with the arms here, you do just want to rotate the forearm inside, pull the cannon forward, and it'll tab into place in back there. And then same thing on the other side, just rotate the forearm around and collapse the shoulders down, pull them out to the side here. And there is a little tab that goes into the slot and back. And then of course the typical Meg's fusion cannon combination there. And there we have Megatron in his tank mode. And I think it looks pretty cool. I actually, I, I definitely dig it. Uh, I don't think it's it's too bad at all. It looks worse um, in the pictures than it does in person, honestly. And this figure is a lot of fun to mess around with, so I, I, I definitely dig it. It looks pretty cool. Articulation-wise, in this mode, you do have full rotation out of that turret, which is pretty neat. And then you can hinge the barrel up and down just in the middle there. And also, I forgot to mention, this is a 5mm port, so blast compatible. And these two pieces here are also blast compatible, blast effect compatible. So you do have those options if you want to use them, which is very, very nice. And he is definitely a sizable tank. He is, he's a, he's a big boy. All right, now for transformation into jet mode, pretty simple. I think the jet mode is definitely the weakest out of all his modes, but begin with just want to split all that kind of undo everything we did there and then take the cannon and rotate it around then we'll also want to rotate here at the upper bicep while also rotating at the forearm 
just to get these arms ready. So rotate the bicep and then rotate again the forearm. So you have something like that. Then we want to untab this from the back there and just kind of get all that out of the way for now. Come to the legs, untab those, untab those, and then open up these skirts here, open up the side skirts, and you can rotate these to the back and then collapse them down. Then for the legs here, just want to rotate this down just so we have some clearance. Rotate this down. And now if you notice these gray parts, which are originally on the back, now should face the front. And you want to just recombine as if you were kind of going to robot mode there. Then come to the legs, detach the wings, and straighten those out. Same thing on this side. Detach the wing. Sometimes, there we go. And you can also collapse these treads back down so they're now sitting flush. And then we want to detach all of this, pull it all out. And now what's going to happen is we're going to rotate here, 90 degrees, and then take this tread piece, rotate it around, and that reveals an engine nozzle, which is pretty cool. And then we're going to take this engine nozzle, and it's got a tab slot connection in several places. So tab here, slot here, sorry, they're black, so they're kind of blended. And then a tab here and a slot here, and just hinge all that in. So you click right in. Then take the leg piece, and there is another tab slot connection that happens on the inside of the foot there. And then straighten out that wing. And leave that there for now. Same thing on the other side. So just want to rotate this leg 90 degrees like that. Oh, and also bring out that, that uh, thigh piece, uh, just so it's out of the way for now. That will be used later. And hinge out the wing now. Then open all this up. Rotate that engine piece out. Attach it to the inside here, like so. Then attach this piece right there. And hinge out that thigh piece and just kind of get this sitting straight as possible for now. I'll just leave all of that sitting like that because now we have work on the front section of the jet. So to begin with, you want to hinge out the nose cone, then take Meg's head, pull it inside just so you can turn it around, then flip it back, and collapse these panels inside, like so. Now we can come to this whole assembly, and you're just going to want to collapse it down. You should just sit over top like that, and kind of make, his, make sure his waist is also sitting straight enough. And then these parts will come over top. We'll deal with those last. So then next, you want to take the legs, hinge these forward, and you have a tab on the inside of that front skirt piece that goes into the slot on the gray part of the leg there. Same thing on the other side. So that should all just hinge in like that. And finally, we have some more tab slot connections. So there's a tab slot that happens on the inside of this arm, and then there's mainly this one that you want to line up, so this tab into that slot. And then you also do need to hinge. I have the gun the wrong way. I want to hinge the gun so it's as far back as it can go, like that. And then also attach this arm. All right, now it's just a matter of straightening everything out, making sure Everything is where it should be. For the most part, it is kind of jumbly mess. This mode's definitely the weakest, so position that gun however you want, and you can position these little pieces as well. And there you have Megatron in his kind of mess of a jet mode, but it is a, it is a jet mode. It's certainly an attempt at a jet mode. Um, yeah, there's his, there's his jet mode. Doesn't hold together the greatest, but by no means bad. Um, I see what they're going for here. It's kind of like an amalgamation of kind of Transformers Prime design and what we see in the Bayverse. Not too bad, not too bad for, you know, being a triple changing Megatron, but 
I think the jet mode, it could have been better, or I also would have been happy with just it being either a jet or a tank. Honestly, it doesn't have to be a triple changer, but I do think that is a pretty cool feature. Definitely a cool feature. And if you want to with this Fusion Cannon, you can pull it off and strap it on any of the top five millimeter ports if you so choose. Um, yeah, that's kind of about it for this mode. <laughs> There's not much to say about it. It's just kind of a jumbly, jumbly mess of Megatron parts. But that, I, I see I see the references. I think it's cool. I think it's a, a neat attempt for sure. I definitely like all the other modes of this guy, so uh, I'm willing to, to let this one go. But apologies, iPhone storage full. But <laughs> you can see there's only one point of connection here for this, this leg um, or wing. So it does tend to come undone a little bit if you don't have everything tabbed in very securely. But still, by no means a bad, bad mode at all. I think it is a pretty cool attempt. If you like this figure, again, check out the link in the description to get yours from All Time Toy Store. And until my next review, I'll see you then. So thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe if you have not already. And see you in the next review.